All right, so today we are talking about tripods. But first, we're gonna go meet up with someone real quick. So a while ago, I got this email. Hello, I hope you read this email. I'm gonna keep it short. My son is almost 15 and he is one of your biggest fans. Basically, she lives over in Orange County, which is about an hour and a half from my place. And his birthday is today. So we're gonna go over there and surprise him, so. Dude, are you sure that email isn't for Peter McKinnon? <laughs> yeah, I know. She accidentally sent it to the wrong YouTuber. She told him like, there's a special guest coming, but she didn't tell him who because she wanted to keep that a surprise. She must be thinking like, who the hell is this? Who the hell is going to come to my house? Yo! Hey, what's going on, dude? How are you doing, man? How are you? Good! You know Sam? Yeah, same Sam. man. What's up? We're, we're name twins. Yeah, yeah, you guys are both <laughs> Sam. How's your arm? Broken. Did you guys go any faster? Yeah. Sam's making birthday Sam run. Sam, don't be a dick, it's his birthday. Why are you stealing his bike? We got the whole squad here. Would you like to be in the video too? Sure. What's your Nothing. message for the world? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> wow, Sam, you picked out that scary shirt. We're coming to a kid's birthday party. Why you know are you scaring everybody like, like that? You know how much I love horror. It's a cool shirt, I got a lot of compliments about it. Birthday Sam is gonna make an epic sequence of ordinary Sam. Can you make him look cool? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it's broken. Well, <laughs> well, we almost had an epic sequence until yeah. Sam decided to break birthday yeah. Sam's bike. It was an accident. I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> so I guess this sequence would be kind of short, huh? You have a lot of footage of your other friends yeah. running, right? Yeah. I kind of want to just like take a photo of Sam's face yeah, and just funny. paste it on your friend's head. Do a riding face. Okay, go. No, now, now you're about to hit a jump. Go. Yeah, okay, and then uh, maybe just like, this is a nice ride, nice day for a ride. Okay, good. We got enough shots to insert in there. We're back and I'm so glad that we did that. It was so much fun hanging out with birthday Sam and Sam for a kid is really talented. One of the things he did really, really well was he knew exactly what shots to get. He's like, okay, I'm gonna get a shot of this tire and I'm gonna get a wide shot of him coming this way. He gave very clear directions and knew when he would get the shot and that's very important. A lot of people tend to just hit record and try to get something hoping for a decent shot and we're all guilty of that once in a while. But but if there's one thing I learned from shooting bigger projects is that to get the perfect shot, you really have to laser focus on a shot and know exactly what you're trying to get. And if you can picture the shot in your head and then you frame it up, you know when you get it. There's no guessing opposed to just having a ton of footage dumped on your computer and you're like, nah, this footage would be okay. I guess this footage would work. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about tripods today. I get so sidetracked. So that tripod right there is the O'Connor 1030DS and it is over 10,000 thousand dollars at what ten thousand dollars for a tripod like for a tripod that holds your camera you can just go to best buy and buy one for like 40 bucks ten thousand dollars you can buy a car you could buy like three school buses. <laughs> no, seriously, I looked it up. There are some used school buses that you can get. And I thought this might be an interesting thing to go over because I remember when I was first getting into filmmaking, I would see these crazy expensive tripods and I always thought, why? The very first tripod I ever bought was, I think from Best Buy and it was about 30 bucks. This is the camera I was using. So I just needed it to hold it in place. And you know what? It worked, but it had some issues. What kind of tripod do you have? It's, it's pretty basic. It's like no counterweights, nothing. It's just something you might use just for photography, still photography. I don't think it'll be that smooth. It's kind of stiff. But when you put like a lot of weight on it, it starts like creaking and like, it's really weird. <laughs> this is probably what most people have is something like this. So the biggest issue with a tripod like that is obviously it's hard to pan or tilt smooth. So what do you need next is a fluid head. So this tripod that this camera is actually on right now was the next tripod I got. And I, yeah, I've had this tripod for a while now and it's one by Slick and it's a fluid head and I see them selling it for about 117 bucks. But all of a sudden now you 
you can move very smoothly. So that's great. And luckily now it's not crazy expensive to get a fluid head tripod. Like this one here is a Magnus VT300 and it looks like you can get it for about 80 bucks. So as a starter tripod, it works. You're gonna be able to move around and get your shots. And when I say these tripods are smooth, I don't mean smooth, smooth. Definitely room for improvement, but still we can float around and it doesn't seem super jarring. I mean, if it was a regular tripod, it'd be like click, click, click. It would be terrible. So from that point, I started to put on some accessories. Like I started mounting a little monitor on there and an audio recorder and a microphone. And it starts to accumulate weight. And I eventually got a Sony F FS700, which is quite a bit larger as well. So there was the weight limitations as well. So I eventually had to upgrade to something bigger. So this one has a 3 8 thread on the bottom. So you just screw this onto a set of tripod legs. And once you start to get to these kinds of tripods, you get the legs separately from the head. A lot of times you can just buy it as a combo set, but you can just pick out the head you want and then pick out the legs you want. So that starts to give you a little bit more flexibility. So full tripod setup like this would be about three to five hundred dollars and it could support a lot more weight so this was the type of tripod i was using for the first probably five to six years doing it professionally and you know what it got the job done and i was decently satisfied with it but there was definitely room for improvement and these shortcomings become more and more obvious the more you use it and a tripod is something that you're probably using on every single shoot and one of my biggest complaints was probably the direct drag system so you can loosen it up it's very easy to move and then you can add more drag to tighten it up a little bit for the smoother shots but i never felt like it got tight enough to where i wanted it and also a lot of times these locks they can sort of start to wear out this one's actually better than the one i used to have because i remember the one i used to have it was just this little tiny knob and you would have to really really crank that thing down to make sure that the camera doesn't tip over or anything like that one thing that's nice about this is that it does have a counterbalance system. So notice if I just pull it down and I let go, it springs back upright. And on this tripod, I don't see an option to adjust how strong that counterbalance is, which can be an issue because if you're trying to tilt down on a shot and hold it there, you're gonna feel the spring trying to spring your camera back up. So eventually I was starting to get enough jobs and consistent work to where I was able to make the jump to a more professional tripod such as this guy and this solves a lot of those issues that I had before. So this is the Sockler FSB8 and the legs are Sockler Flotex 75s. This one has a bowl on the bottom. So see how it's like a ball right here. The common sizes are 50, 75, 100, 150, but this one's a 75. So slightly bigger than the smallest size. And these are always great because you could level out your camera even if your tripod legs are a little bit crooked. Last thing you wanna be doing is making all your adjustments of trying to level out your camera by releasing a leg and trying to shuffle it around. And yes, when it comes to video gear, the law of diminishing returns is very real. So every time you wanna get a slightly better tripod, you're gonna be paying exponentially more. So this one comes in at 2,755 bucks right now for this setup right here. But I found it to be a very worthwhile investment. When it comes to pro tripods like a Sockler or O'Connor, these things are built to last a very long time, easily 20 years or more. And also it's going to be used more frequently than anything else pretty much because you're gonna be switching out camera bodies, you're gonna be shooting on different lenses. And as long as your camera is in the weight class of your tripod, you can pretty much use this tripod on anything from a small DSLR all the way up to something like this. So that's one of the ways I've justified it to myself to spend all that money on this tripod. Now I have all the locks loose and I have all the tension loosened up. So now it's basically just free floating around and notice it has that counterbalance kind of like that Manfrotto did. But the beauty of this one is that you can adjust how much tension it has. This specific one has 10 different stages. So right now it's very springy, way too much. So I can lower that down. See, so three is just barely not enough. It's not able to hold up that camera. It keeps wanting to tip over. So let's try it out at four. And that's probably where we wanna be. It does spring up a little bit. The magic spot for this weight would probably be right between three and four. 
before is pretty good right there. And once I add a little bit of tension back in, it should stay no matter where I put it. So that's one of the beauties of a good counterbalance system. Another thing I really love about this tripod is the amount of drag you want on the tripod. It's labeled from zero to five. So if I have it on zero, it's just going to swing around like that. And if I put it to five, it's gonna be a nice sturdy shot. And that's how you're gonna get the stable, stable shots, especially if you have a tight lens on here or a macro shot, then all those little tiny inconsistencies in your motion is going to show up. And the beauty of having these numbers is that you can match your pan and tilt drag to be the same. And that is gonna be really awesome because when I do those diagonal angles, it's going to be very even pressure to get it to go diagonal. One thing I would notice before on older tripods when I was trying to get a perfectly diagonal macro shot is that instead of it going perfectly diagonal like that, it would do a little bit of this like that, like little steps. And on other tripods, I always noticed that there was always a little bit of this dead space every time I would change directions like this. So yeah, even though there are tripods that can give you a smooth motion, this will give you a super precise version of that. And I love how this tripod is a top load. So instead of trying to shuffle in and squeeze in a tripod plate like that, you could just drop it in from the top. And the Fultec 75 legs down here are awesome. They're relatively new, but they're great. They're one of my favorites because first of all, it's carbon fiber, so it's very lightweight. And also to release all the legs, you can do it all from just right here. So there's three latches, one, two, three, just like that. And you have complete control over how high you wanna put the camera and then you just lock it down just like that. And this is so great to be able to do when you're just a solo operator and you don't have assistance to help you set up tripods. You don't wanna be bending down and trying to extend legs down. Here, get it to the height you want and lock it down all from up here. You don't have to bend over constantly. So this is one of my favorite investments right here. Finally, this is the O'Connor 1030DS. Yes, the tripod that costs over $10,000. One thing I'll get out of the way right now is that this doesn't do anything magical, okay? It's not like you push a button and it'll come out and give you a back rub. That'd be awesome. If little arms came out, and doo -doo, set life can be rough. That'd be a feature that O'Connor should be thinking about putting in their next tripod. But what it does do is it's a video tripod and it pretty much does everything you might want out of a video tripod and it does it perfectly. But a lot of it is a feeling thing, so it's kind of hard for me to explain it, but it's like if you were to watch a video of someone riding in a Rolls Royce Phantom, they're like, this is a really smooth car. You watch the video and you go, oh, yeah, I guess it looks smooth, but then you get inside of one and you go, oh, it is really smooth. It's kind of like this tripod. It feels like a luxury car ride. <laughs> in a lot of ways, this is pretty similar to that Sockler I just showed you, but everything is just perfectly refined. Start with the brakes. So I feel like this is like a, a handbrake that could stop a car, but you lock in the tilt and it's not gonna move anywhere, which is important because a lot of times you have big cinema lenses on here, which are really big and heavy. And when you do a lens swap, you pull one off and then all of a sudden, the center of gravity of that camera temporarily shifts to the back. So if you don't have a good brake on your tripod, then the whole back end could just tip over and freak everyone out. And this tripod supports up to 41 pounds and still be able to operate a camera very smoothly. So with that weight limit of 41 pounds, you could really keep adding all the accessories you might want and your AC might want. And it's nice being able to keep adding stuff on there without the concern of topping off that weight limit. Now this tripod is fully carbon fiber, so it is relatively light, but at the same time, it's not a lightweight tripod. But it does play in nicely because it does give that extra sturdiness of this tripod. I mean, if the legs are planted out, it's not moving anywhere. And if some clumsy dude just happens to walk by and accidentally trip on the tripod, this thing's probably not gonna tip over. But sometimes even with that Sockler, I could feel it wiggling around a little bit. Another big thing that this thing does really well is it doesn't have any sort of spring back. So on some tripods, when you turn the camera and add pressure, the legs can actually flex a little bit. So when you stop pushing on it and let go of the tripod, it can spring back, but these legs super sturdy. They're not gonna flex at all. This is also a top load, 
which kind of becomes a necessity when you start adding all this stuff up here because you're not gonna be able to slide this thing on and off trying to aim it into that little socket and get it right in there. As I rotate this knob, it steplessly adds counterbalance. So I could really dial in exactly how much counterbalance I want. So I might've added a little bit too much because it's bouncing up. So I'm gonna just dial that down just a little bit. Feels just about right there. I can pretty much let go of the camera and it'll stay put. So counterbalance is perfect right there. And also the pan and tilt is also going to be stepless. So that's great because you could put in exactly how much drag you want on that pan and tilt. So now I have everything dialed in and balanced and it feels perfect. I can't even explain how nice this feels to move that camera around and there's no little bits of flex from the head. There's no flex from the legs. It literally feels like it's just bolted into the ground right now. So it feels so good and you feel like you have so much control over this camera. It's awesome. I wish I could just like pull you guys into your screen and pop you off the other side and you guys could just feel how good this feels. It's just like, oh man. Kind of like Sockler, this is also a ball head. This one's a hundred millimeters. So it's a little bit bigger. The bigger that bowl gets, you can generally add a heavier duty tripod head to it. So should you go out and buy one of these right now? Probably not. It's going to be overkill for a majority of projects. And even though this is a much better tripod, is it four times better? Probably not. But if your goal is to be using one of the best standalone tripods out there, then this is where you would look. And again, most of these are rented, so it's not gonna be that much of a difference. It's not like you're gonna go out and pay $10,000 for it right away for your project. You rent these and the day rates on these tripods aren't that bad. So yeah, hopefully that clarifies a little bit of the difference between a super cheap tripod to an entry-level pro tripod to a pro tripod to a beast of a thing like this. <laughs> oh, by the way, this is a small HD Cine 7. I love this thing because this is a monitor as well as a video transmitter. So there's a Teradek built into this thing, which is freaking fantastic because usually we would have to set up a monitor and then have a Teradek separately mounted on the side. And I hate mounting multiple things. And soon we should be able to connect this monitor into the red and be able to control the red. So I might even just pull this little monitor off part of the time and then go out with just this monitor, that would be awesome because this monitor on the red camera, not a huge fan of. Anyways, let's read some comments. Top comment was from Caleb. Her birthday is coming up. <laughs> I think you hit the caps lock right before you typed up. You might want to get your keyboard checked. <laughs> I hate you. No, like for real, recently I had to stay in the hospital for like a week or so because of my appendix. Final bill was 10 euros for the ambulance. 10 for the ambulance? That's, that's all you have to pay for a week in the hospital? If you guys don't know, this is about 45 grand for the surgery to get my arm back in place. Luckily, insurance is taking care of a majority of it, but it's still going to be a big chunky bite out of my account. This arm is expensive, man. Not only my elbow, but like 15 years ago, I broke my shoulder and had to get surgery done on that. So from here over, I'm very expensive. Bing Chaming says, bro, where'd you get that shirt? Oh, <laughs> potatojet.com. Lefty is the best tripod ever. <laughs> that is true. This may be the ultimate super fluid head tripod, but Lefty has it beat in personality. I mean, come on, look at that doggy face.